I think that one of the most important things that you can do is send somebody a handwritten thank you note. I love bookkeeping. Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. My name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. And thank you for listening. Today, we're going to be talking about something that is super duper important. And I know we say that every episode, but this is something that's really (laughs) crucial um, to those of you who own bookkeeping businesses, and that is the sales process. Um, Today, I'm going to be asking Melissa a lot of questions about her sales process and how she makes it seamless, because I know she loves to talk about this. Um, Melissa, how are you doing today? I'm I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I I'm really excited. Um, I don't know if I will be able to to kind of like keep it down, right? Like you're gonna have to cut me off um, because a lot of the stuff I'm like super passionate about, and I'm super passionate about teaching other people how to do it. Like I am so transparent and open and honest about everything. Like there are gonna be like no secrets, no hidden agenda here. I will tell you all of the things. We all don't, yeah, we do not gatekeep around here. We are here to share <laughs> all the industry secrets. Um, so Melissa, one question that I have for you, um, when it comes to that opening lead to the final closing of the sale, um, what is something that every sales process for you has in common? Um, everyone has in common. I, I would say that a lot of times when they're coming to us specifically, because uh, we have definitely set our pricing commiserate with our value, <laughs> I will say, um, that I have at that point found people that do see our value, but they also understand what we do when they get to that last point, right? Like when we're, they're about to close, like we've gone through this whole sales process, they see our value. And a lot of times, I would say 99% of the people that come on board, they could do their own bookkeeping, but they just don't have the time. Like they're at a place in their business where they understand the importance of delegating the tasks that they don't have to be doing themselves anymore. And they see that my services are the, are an opportunity for them to get back more time in their business so that they could grow. That's a big, that's a big one. Like I want to say like 99% of the clients that I'm working with, like that is their intention is that they know that they need to delegate tasks that they don't need to be doing anymore so that they can focus and grow their own business. And I am a solution for them to get their own time back, but to still make sure that they get the information that they need to make the decisions in their business. Um, So really and truly like at that point, they just know that I am, I'm just here with solutions for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think a lot of, I think a lot of potential clients are coming to business owners because they don't have the time or the knowledge to do their own bookkeeping because it's a, it's a big job. It's a tedious job too. And so I think that's probably a pain point that a lot of people can identify with is that their clients don't have the time to do their own bookkeeping because owning a business and running a business is extremely time consuming. Um, so talk, yeah. I want to hear, I know you kind of have some steps that you like to implement when it comes to your sales process. So tell me about your first step. Oh my gosh. Well, so I think that I honest, I honestly could spend years on, on this topic. And so I think I want to start with like maybe more like less of steps and like, I guess maybe my biggest advice for people so I can generalize the topic. Yeah, I'm going to generalize as much as I can because if I get into a specifics, I people will stop listening. They'll be like, oh God, this is so boring. But I think the first one is to make sales easy. Um, ev- doing everything you can when you consider your sales process to think about it from your perspective of how to make it as easy as possible. Because at the end of the day, you're, the majority of prospects will close with the first person to contact them. And um, the majority of prospects will also 
say no <laughs> like 20 times before they close at the same time. So at the same time, like it's going to be the first person, but they're going to reject you a bunch. Um, so the first person that allows them to reject them 20 times before they say yes, it's like the sales is such a psych trip, which is why a lot of people hate it because it's really hard to feel rejected. And so what you want to do is set your process up so that first of all, you're allowing them to reject you in ways to kind of psych them in a way, if that makes sense, like allow them to reject you through automation so that they get those rejections out, but you don't have to feel the brunt of it. Because that's a big part of, 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 especially people that take things personally, like everything I do, I, I, I take it personally. I say not to take things personal. It's just business, not personal. I take it all personally. Um, and so in the sales process, it's really hard for a lot of people because it really is just 99% of your time is just being rejected. But man, let me tell you about that that feeling when you when you do actually close that sale. It's worth it. So um, for me, it's just making things as easy as possible. I think the first step is make it as easy as possible for, for people to schedule a time to talk to you. You need to embed, first of all, you need to have a scheduling link. You need to have a calendar. Um, my biggest pet peeve is when I am talking to somebody and I'm like, yeah, we let's schedule a time to talk. And they're like, oh, when are you available? Oh, on Wednesday? How about Wednesday at two? Oh, no, no, not Wednesday at two. How about Thursday at one? How about, how about next Tuesday at seven? No, give me your freaking calendar. Like I, let me, I will know my schedule and I can go to your calendar and pick a time. Like the biggest, biggest pet peeve, if we go back and forth via email, trying to pick a time, like give me your scheduling link. And if you don't have one guys, like there are free calendars. Calendly, Calendly has, you can have like one meeting type for free without paying them for anything. Like just use that just one free calendar for a free consultation and upload your schedule and you can embed all of your calendars so you don't overbook. And so you can be a professional that has a, a, a calendar. Um, Sorry, I could really get on a rant about that one. Like how much of my time has been wasted going back and forth with people on emails, trying to pick a time? <laughs> like, no. Yes. Simplify. Make it easy. Um, you know, have fairly decent open availability or, you know, you know, it's, it's little simple things, right? Like, when when you have your calendar, like don't have it available like in five minute increments. Like go into your settings, get to know how to use your calendar. If you don't know how, Google it so that you only take meetings on the hour or on the half hour. Like don't take any meetings on fifteen minutes. I could man, I could talk so much about scheduling. It's it's see, this is where I told you keep me generalized, keep me generalized, Hannah. I could go down a rabbit hole about this. Well, uh, um, but I think a lot of people like hearing this because. <laughs> Clearly, you know what you're doing. So I think it helps it, it helps to have the simple and approachable tips for people um, on how to make yeah. sales easy, not only for you, but make it easy for your potential customers. Um, nobody That's wants to jump through thing. hoops to, to schedule a meeting. Yes. And it, just making it as easy as possible um, because just think, again, think about it from your own perspective. Like, I don't know. I'm literally the worst person to try to sell to. And I am a salesperson and I see it. And that does not stop my natural inclination to avoid, just avoid everything. Like, oh my God, the Dext representatives, man, I dodge them. Guys, we can talk about that for a long time too, about how their pricing is unethical and that um, I, I hate it, but I love their product. So I keep buying it, but I, I avoid them. And, and that's what you got to think about, like from a sales perspective, make it as easy as possible to not, to, so people don't want to avoid you, right? And so I think the next part of it is like, okay, make it as easy as possible for them to sign up for a free consultation. And then if you're going to have a form, make it easy to fill out, you know, don't require too much information, only what's necessary. But if you do ask them for additional information, so for instance, like I ask clients, what obviously the name of their company is. Um, I ask them for their address and I'll tell you why later. Um, I ask them for their address. I ask them for uh, their annual revenue and um, I verify that they are a painting business. 
but I use that information that they give me. My second biggest pet peeve, or possibly my first, I'll have to take more time to think about this, is if you ask for information that you do not take note of, and then you proceed to ask them again when you actually meet with them. For the love of God, do not make people answer questions if you are not going to take note of it, and then you're just going to ask them again. That is so frustrating, especially in a service like bookkeeping services where we are supposed to have attention to detail, and you don't. (laughs) Like that is the first thing for me. If you're like, if you, it's essentially, it's showing that you, you don't respect my time. Um, you're going to make me do things that are unnecessary and you're not going to have the attention to detail I need to keep track of the information that I've already provided you, man, that is just like a bunch of red flags for a bookkeeper for me. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I think that, Everybody has those. I think it's it's funny that you mentioned that because I feel like everybody has those little pet peeves when they are in a sales funnel. And I mean, it can be with any company. I know that even for me, if I'm looking at something online or I'm looking to buy a service or a product, if it's too difficult for me, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to find someone who makes it easier. And so I yes. think I think making it, I think simplifying, but taking taking the time to simplify and to make it a seamless process for your potential customers. I think that is, I think that's super game changer. It it is. And it's just, honestly, it's just an initial upfront investment because if you use the system, the way that the system is able to be used and you automate it where it's necessary, that's a big key is using automation you really just need to do that upfront initial investment of setting it up. And there's so many services to help you do this. Um, I know that bookkeepers.com is coming out with something that's just like literally game changing that I'm using in one of my businesses that does like all this stuff for you in a way that is just unimaginable that it could even be possible. But it's, it's just thinking about it from if I were in their shoes, how would I want this to be? And then doing it. And sticking to it and being consistent about it. And, you know, just, I think, again, putting yourself through it. So once you do go through that time and you do get it set up, go through it as if you are the customer and test it. Because again, we, you don't want to go through all of this work just for something to not function. And I've done this before. And we've all had this happen before where you set everything up and then Uh, maybe there's a transcription error and you missed, you know, when you copied and pasted, it didn't paste the last, you know, letter of the code. And now your scheduling link doesn't work. You don't want to test that out on a live website. You want to find out that your code doesn't work before it doesn't. So, um, you know, making it as easy as possible, testing it, um, and really thinking about how to make this as easy. If I was in the sales process, what would piss me off? Um, for me, it's a lot of things, but so don't think about, don't think about it from me, my perspective. I'm apparently just angry when it comes to sales. Today's show is brought to you by Keeper, the one app to run your bookkeeping business. Keeper helps you get faster client responses with your own custom branded QuickBooks integrated client portal. Finally, you can say goodbye to those pesky spreadsheets full of uncategorized transactions. Keeper also helps you catch those embarrassing coding errors before your clients do. And with Keeper, you can generate beautiful custom reports that your clients will absolutely love to read. To find out more, go to keeper.app. That's keeper.app. Mention I Love Bookkeeping to get 20% off your first three months. Again, go to keeper.app to find out more. Thank you for listening. And I know another thing that you really like to talk about is touch points during the sales process. Um, what are your like biggest takeaways from creating touch points with potential customers? Um, you want it to feel like you are stalking them, but I can promise you that you could probably add more touch points even after that. And they would still not respond to half of them. <laughs> and so it's like, it's a numbers game, right? Like we're, we're all, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a numbers game, right? It's math. The more touch points you have, um, the more of a relationship you're building almost subconsciously, but the more opportunities you're giving the client to say no, which again, you know, they're going to say no 20 times before they say yes. 
So the more touch points you have, the more you're getting that rejection out of their system so that once you do sit down with them, you're more likely to close the sale. And I really, for me, I used to do this stuff manually. And that's what a lot of people do now, right? It's like, oh, okay. And that's why we don't do it because we have to do it. But you can set up automations to assist with these client touch points. So my biggest one that I'm absolutely in love with is that a client signs up for a free consultation. I ask them for their address um, because they get put into a system where I then send them a pre-positioning postcard that gets mailed to their physical address. So like two days after, two to three days after they sign up for a free consultation with me, they go to their mailbox and boom, booking for painters. We're in their mailbox. Um, it's something tangible. So this does really, really good for, first of all, reminding them, oh yeah, I signed up for that free consultation with that uh, bookkeepers for whatever. Um, Cause everyone can, no one can ever get our name right. And, but then it's also good for those people that don't really like the cloud, right? That don't like things that they can't feel or see. Um, they like tangible, like a company, those types of people where they're like, yeah, I want a local guy so I can go in and have a cup of coffee with my bookkeeper. Like that person, they're like, oh man, like bookkeeping for painters is a real thing. They're in my mailbox. So that's kind of like the first step. They sign up for a free consultation. Boom. They get sent a postcard that gets to them two to three days later. But within the first hour, I get a notification to my phone that says, okay, go ahead and send this client a bonjouro. And a bonjouro is um, a software that we use to take a video. Um, so basically I, you know, I pull up the app and I record a video of myself that's saying, hey, Hannah, I saw that you uh, scheduled a free consultation for next Thursday. Um, I wanted to introduce myself ahead of time. I'm Melissa. I'm the CEO of Bookkeeping for Painters. Um, I'm so excited to get to talk to you and learn more about your business, bookkeepers.com. Um, if you have any questions between now and our free consultation next week, go ahead and reply to this video um, and I can chat with you then. Uh, I look forward to talking to you. Hope you have a great day. Uh, bye. And boom, send that. So then the client's getting a text message and an email with my face that's personalized because they just, you know, submitted their free consultation. And it's, it's another like, Hey, I'm a real human. I'm at the front of your mind. I care about you. Um, because so much that I recorded this personalized video, um, that has your name and information about your company. And I got those things right because I asked you to put that in the free consultation form and I listened to it and I took note to it and I've remembered it. Um, and so that literally will take me less than 60 seconds to do with automations. And then um, kind of last but not least, again, with the automation system for things that you can set up is I think that one of the most important things that you can do is send somebody a handwritten thank you note. I love that. I love, 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 love snail mail. That's my favorite thing. So much, so much. Appreciate it. They really do. And do you want to know one of my worst traits is sending handwritten thank you notes in a timely manner. Now, that being said, a late, th this is, a, my Southern friends have taught me this, okay? That a late thank you note is better than none at all. Um, but that being said, I'm also in Nicaragua right now. And I also, before I was, I had kids and um, I had, you know, oh, well, shit, I'm out of stamps. And um, uh crap, I totally forgot uh, to write one for this person or that person, or I'm just unorganized or whatever it might be, right? We all have excuses to not send the thank you note. And so what we did is we set up an automation again, because we have their address. We asked it in the beginning to send them a handwritten thank you card the day after their consultation. So it gets mailed out the day of their consultation so that it'll be there anywhere from one to three days after. And this is done by a company called Handwritten, and it is actually a um, a robot that uses a like a handwriting font. So it's literally pen to paper by a robot. So it looks like it has actually been handwritten, and they write out a script that we have given them to do. And most people have an idea that yeah, this might not actually be handwritten, but we've had quite a few that didn't. And regardless. It's better than nothing, which was what was happening because of life. So I highly recommend if you can handwrite a thank you card and send that to every single person that you talk to. But if you can't, 
again, utilize the automation to make your life easier while still increasing the number of touch points that you have. So those are my big three. I have a thousand more that we could talk about when it comes to touch points, but those are my big three is just, again, really using automation to assist you with it. Um, Knowing again, that you're going to have those days where your kid has the flu, um, you know, you're out of stamps. uh, There was a snowstorm. uh, It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The mail doesn't go out today. Oh, it didn't go out. Now it's in my glove box. (laughs) I'm supposed to drop it off and it just never happens. Right. Um, so set yourself up for success, knowing that, that, that stuff's going to happen. Yeah. Um, okay. So what I I know that you, you said you kind of have three big points for your sales process. What is your third? So number one, again, making sales easy. Number two, touch points. You need significantly more than you feel comfortable with. And then number three, which should really be number one is managing expectations. Mm, That's huge. Oh my God. And I tell everybody in my company this, like, look, guys, I don't care what the answer is. Like at the end of the day, the answer could be no. It could be the worst. It could be no, we hate you and your bookkeeping is complete garbage. And but the, the important thing is that we know that and we manage their expectations appropriately. It doesn't matter what the message is. If you find a way to tell the client in a polite and professional way and manage their expectations appropriately. What you don't want to do is make promises that you can't keep or to say that you're going to do something and then not do it or to promise that this is exactly the way that it's going to be and then everything change and then you forget to tell the client that things are changing. Because changes happen and people make mistakes and you are going to mess up somebody's taxes and they're going to end up with an $8,000 tax bill that you end up having to cover. Ask me how I know. Mm. And people understand that shit happens. What people don't understand is when you do not communicate that effectively and tell them what's going on. Clients will be okay with a change and clients will be okay with a mistake because you would be okay with changes and mistakes if you manage their expectations in a timely manner and appropriately. So as soon as you know that something is changing or as soon as you know that something's different or as soon as you know anything that there is to know about that client, you need to bring it to that client so that you can manage their expectations because that's what it is. That is what sales is, is managing expectations, right? Because I've come to people and I've gone and done a diagnostic review, which we'll have to do 15 other podcasts about because I love those. Um, And realize that everything's on fire, um, realize that they might be being stolen from or, you know, whatever terrible thing you might unearth. And the important thing is to bring it to them in a polite and professional manner and manage their expectations for what next, right? It kind of circles back to our last um, podcast where we were talking about answering the question, what's in this for me? What's in this for me? And what are the next steps? you know, managing their expectations for what to expect, what's going to happen. We all have anxiety, especially around bookkeeping and taxes and accounting. And so if you can think about it from their perspective that they want to know what's going on and what to expect next, man, you will be miles ahead of the competition. Well, and I think, I think managing your expectations is, is so important in kind of anything when it involves sales, because you have to you, I, I love the saying, um, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And yes. I think when it comes to managing expectations, that's how I like to go into. And I'm, ugh, I don't, I don't work in sales. Um, but I, when I used to have clients, um, when I was doing hair and makeup, um, that's kind of the adage that I followed was hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Under promise, over deliver. That's another one that I think is really important when it comes to managing your expectations. Because I found that if I did better than they expected, then the retention rate was just through the roof. Um, So I I feel like, but that really, that can translate to almost any industry, I feel like, is under promise, over deliver. Any relationship. And like, 
for bookkeeping specifically, if I tell a client, okay, you know, we have a four to six week turnaround to get your books cleaned up and get you into production. And then it takes us 10 weeks. Well, they're disappointed. If I tell the clients, you know, it takes eight to 12 weeks on average to get you cleaned up and into production. And this timeline is going to depend on our availability and access to your information and how quickly you respond to our requests for information. And they get it quickly and we get them done in four to six weeks. We just blew it out of the water. But then if it does take eight to 12 weeks because they don't get back to us in time, we're still in that window of time frame. And then say we're in the middle of that and this client is either ghosting us or, oh my God, we go in and find out that their payroll is a nightmare. It hasn't been done correctly in years. There's mapping issues, whatever it may be. And this is going to take another four weeks. Well, when we determine that at the four week mark, we immediately reach out to the client and say, hey, We took a deeper dive. I had a payroll specialist go in and do a review of your payroll liabilities. And it looks like, hey, this is a bigger dumpster fire than we even knew. It's probably going to take us four to six more weeks. They're going to appreciate that than getting to the eight to 12 week mark where we're saying, hey, we thought it would take eight to 12, but now it's going to take 16. They want to know as soon as you know so that they can adjust their expectations and know the truth. So it really is, again, I mean, managing expectations, it really goes back to, again, communication. Everything is about communication. It's the cornerstone of every nutritious breakfast. Uh, That's what we're uh, on the down low calling the series. And um, it's just really just communicating so that people can manage their own expectations and so that you can manage your expectations too. Uh, It's really important. Yeah, and I, I, I... I completely agree with that last statement that it's important to manage not only their expectations, but yours as well. Um, so that it's like that perfect kind of harmonious relationship between you and your client. I have so enjoyed listening to you talk about this because it's very evident that you're super passionate about it and that you have a lot of knowledge to give to our listeners about this. If you guys have any questions about communicating within the sales process, how to make it seamless, if you have questions, concerns, tips, um, please shoot us an email at success at ilovebookkeeping.com. Again, that is success at ilovebookkeeping.com. Um, Melissa, thank you so much for all your input today. I have really enjoyed listening to all of this, and I know that our listeners love it too. Um, my name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. Thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. I love bookkeeping. Ah! Here's a little shout to all my friends working hard at keeping the books. You want to change your life? You want to grow that business? It's not.